from a job lot of laptops I got this Dell CPI and this is the probably the worst condition laptop so it was the one that at the end of the pile um, and came along with it but I'm going to see what I can do with it rather than just uh, throw it away so let's have a quick look at it we've got cracks on the hinges there a little bit dirty but it will clean up I'm sure if I open it carefully I've got um, I've got a broken bezel here although the screen looks okay uh, it says Pentium 2 MMX colored sticker there for Windows NT Windows 95 keyboard uh, looks okay actually now I have spotted a hole in the M key that's a really strange thing to have happened but otherwise I'm sure this keyboard will clean up CD-ROM drive okay so we got some rust marks It otherwise looks okay I think not in bad condition I wonder if that works it's quite heavy memory wise got a single sim I think that's the BIOS chip can't remember and looking at our single sim any clues about this no SCC of Korea Along the sides, we got the strange Dell power connector, a kind of arch shape with three pins. And on this side, everything's missing. So PCM CIA slot cover is missing. And the hard drive is missing. And I can tell it must be a caddy because it's a special type of connector. On the rear, we're missing the docking cover, docking station connection cover, although socket looks fine. Um, keyboard, mouse, VGA, printer. Uh, we have a USB, I wonder if that does anything. So there we go, that is the heatsink. So like, like laptops at the time, it looks like a network. Ethernet was not standard. We would use PCM CIA card. So there's one thing to do in circumstances like that. It seems a shame just to let this laptop go. So I think this is a prime candidate for finding a donor machine. So I did some eBaying and this is what I found. Dell CPI. A little bit dirty. No broken M key. No broken keys. I think it's dirtier than that one. The bezel is all good. And even the stickers there match. So this one was just a few pounds, ten pounds in fact postage. It's missing this cover, which would be a shame. And it's got nothing in the front at all, whereas this does have the CD on the battery. Now sadly it's also missing PCM, CIA cover and caddy. So we'll have to address the caddy situation, but I suspect um, that's going to be a, a big problem. I've got a couple of memory sticks, but I'm not too um, optimistic about this. This one says 16 megabytes. And this one, it does say the IBM, which is good, but it says 32. So that's really, even for this age of laptop, that's not that special. It's come with, I've just unplugged it so the light's still on. Now the cap's totally not dead, not totally dead. Now, this doesn't look very original. 
high capacity. And it's got the correct connector on it, but I know this isn't the one off a Dell connector. Let's try the original one that came oh, with the laptop job lot. This was by far the worst laptop of the, the set, but the other two laptops in the job lot worked. They were missing parts, but they worked. Plugged in. Okay. Power light, I can hear CD-ROM spinning. So, turn the lighting off a bit and see if we can see it. So, invalid configuration, please run setup, primary hard disk, zero not found, we know that. Press F2 to run setup utility. We've got Pentium 2 66, system memory 64 meg, video memory 2 megabytes, level 2 cache 512. Laptop number 2. Again, I think the uh, screen looks very good. So we have better keyboard, no hole in the keyboard. We've got the better screen bezel. We still have some crack, but we got not as good memory. Uh, no features here. In fact, I just noticed that this laptop is broken here in the middle. And this one, I'll try not to bend it, but it seems okay. A very good result. I have two working machines, so therefore two good motherboards. And it's spinning up. F1 to retry boot. Cool. There we go. Setup is inspecting your computer's hardware configuration. Wow, look at that. We have a working CD-ROM drive. Ooh. I think I'm gonna try the CD-ROM in the other machine. Possibly your laptop is smelling a little bit. Nothing bad happening. Still loading, but it's still doing very well. There we go. This computer does not have enough memory to run Windows 2000. This version requires 64 megabytes. Setup cannot continue. So I think um, it doesn't have enough memory, but the other machine does. This is clearly the better machine. It has performed better with the CD-ROM, Windows 2000 install. And um, we can take the parts, we can take the memory CD-ROM from the original job lock machine. So having selected the better laptop of the two in terms of case, time to see if I can dismantle this and we'll give it a thorough clean and check the motherboard. So, lots of screws so I think the best thing is just to try removing those and see if the base comes up. screws are the same so far. That's always a good start. So you screw in the foot. Will that be a different size? Yes it is. That's quite a weird thing. So I wonder if it means other. No, one hasn't. I wonder if there's a screw under that foot. I have some more screws here. And these are obviously going to be small ones. Do 
we have any screws here? I don't think so. So is that a three bottom on the front? Go out. Yeah. Let's those out. Take these out anyway. Maybe that just enables the top to come off. There's definitely more screws there. Whoops, called key off. Okay, keyboard is out. quality keyboard so far. Right, keys are falling off left, right and centre. Have I broken this key or does it? Do the keys really come off that easy? Okay, put the keyboard to one side because I want to clean it if they come off that easy. That's fine. Maybe the back has to come off. Lots more screws now for the back. Keyboard. I think I need to disconnect the trackpad cable. There we go. It's disconnected. It's millimeters away from cracking the plastic. still. That side's not coming. Oh, there we go. Right. There we have a good base. All oh, these are so delicate. Ah, oh, look at how they've designed that. That's so delicate. Anyway, that's good. That's another piece that can definitely be dis dismantled for cleaning. strange connector in here. 
Does it just lift off? It does. Wow. Okay, so that's the screen separated. And we'll just need to do the four screws holding the screen on. screen is separated. I think the fan needs to come off next. So two screws holding their fan on. Oh, they're long screws. by a tiny connector. Can we remove the connector? Yes, the connector is out. There's the fan. I put the two screws in so I know which screws hold the fan in. And it looks pretty good and dust free. Okay, excellent. So this can be clean now. It is broken there. There is a chance the other laptop has a better base. No, that one is broken too, so they all break. That'll save me dismantling the other laptop. So that needs to go for washing. And how are we looking on this board? sink in immaculate condition with no dust at all. That's a thermal pad. I can't remember what goes on there. Nothing, I didn't think.
processor appears to be under this riveted piece. black screws this is riveted so nothing I can do under there but I will put these screws in nice and evenly it's really interesting they didn't bother with the fourth one Parts have been washed, time for some reassembly. Still a little bit of grubbiness here, so I might try that. But I want to get reassembled first before I forget how parts go together. So the two buttons, I need to get the clips back up inside there. So how do I do that? like that. Okay, those two clips there. That's clicking very nicely. It's very difficult. I'm worried about this breaking there and there. So the touchpad with its connector, I think that levers up that. Fits into there and the backing plate. So which way does this go on? Faces downwards because I think that must press against there. This must go under the connector, I think. I guess these help spread the weights. That's got a bit of plastic attached to it. That's strange. And that was a bit of glue. I'll leave that on. So these large screws must help spread the weight a bit. obviously a high stress area for the laptop but at least this part looks reasonably easy to change in the field I'm sure lots needed changing and connecting the ribbon cable to the touchpad is it going to push in nicely there we go I think that just sits on there, that's fine. And that is it. I don't think there's any more parts fit to this. Here is the base unit, and I think the base unit is built up with the motherboard. And then the laptop grows from there. So I'm going to see how that goes. That must go underneath those. Oh, that's not going to help. Maybe 
the back it's something not sitting. Ah, oh, there we go. So the headphone jacks have to pop in. There's a piece of plastic there that pushes, so it does kind of snap in. Let's hope I don't have to take that out again. There is a hole here where the back of the speaker goes in. The speaker pushes in. Metal plate holds it in place. So I'm going to go silver screws in here. Do they fit? No, they don't fit. So that is not them. Is it the ordinary black screws that fit? And they do fit. So let's choose some of the ones with the slightly corroded heads because these won't be visible. Before I tighten them, I need to make sure I've rotated the speakers in the correct way so the wiring reaches nicely. There we go. Can I push that in a bit more? Yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, that's fine. And I guess that stops the cable being trapped by the top, by the palms. tighten the screws. I think I'd like to test uh, at this stage. So I've got VGA and power all fitted. So I think I can boot up and test the functionality is still okay having taken the heatsink off and generally pulled things apart. VJ monitor set up, VJ cable. Goes into VGA, it's upside down. And I've plugged in the power supply. What a crimp the old cable. One question, where is the power button? Oh, it's here. And the LED's here. Okay, so let's see if we get LED illumination. Nothing. Oh, something. Invalid configuration. I think that's as good as I can expect. Uh, I think that says the motherboard has survived the process and we've even got now beeps and I can't strike F1 to progress so continuing with the build. So this is the laptop that's become the donor laptop and um, the screen bezel is very broken. Where did that go? was broken down here and then actually I've broken it here. Um, oh, let me keep the rubber thing. However, the screen does work. But what I did notice on both laptops is that uh, there is cracking around this hinge. So obviously that is a weakened area. So going back to the screen on the better laptop, Fortunately, we haven't got cracking, but I'm now aware. Is that a crack? I'm not sure. I'm now aware that these are absolutely fragile and someone has tried to remove these. So maybe there's been an issue. And in addition, on the back, this side's okay, but that side is cracking. In fact, maybe there is cracks. 
So it may be worth gluing the back area of these to reinforce them and uh, checking that the tension on the hinges, maybe the hinges tighten up with age. So I'd like to start by removing the front bezel. So I know it's these tiny, tiny screws under these small rubber items. these ones I think I might try I might try a knife in fact the donor ones got better ones so if I leave these off I could replace them I think they're going to split there we go. so having scratched it I then managed to remove it on the next try These screws look fairly normal. Is that a screw missing or is it there? It is there, just covered in glue. And these are going to be very tiny screws, aren't they? This panel looks more scratched than the donor one, and I think it's just dirt, so when the cover's off, I'll give it a clean. It's interesting, these screws are the same as the ones for the hinge. So now, obviously, I'm going to start to prod. fragile bezel. Revision A3 D third date seven eight ten. Now surely in twenty ten they weren't making new screens for this laptop. I'm gonna take these off first. So we've got to the back. So give these there is a small rub down. Give the table 
wobble, sorry. Thorough clean. Okay, nearly streak free, a bit more mixing to go. Right, I'm sure that will do. And then I'm going to place this generously into the little indentation. And in fact, all around it. Spread it out a bit just to give us some more strength. And I've got the bracket for one side to make sure that I've not um, hindered the bracket position. Okay, that's fine. And on the other side I can't do much with that. bracket is still part of that assembly. Is there a date code on the back of this screen? And it says 98.7 risk of electric shock. I'm going to leave this next door by the window because it smells a bit. And while waiting, I can use some screen cleaner and determine which is the best screen. Try and get into the corners with a bud. some small spots of damage but in fact that's pretty good so here's the lid the glue has had a few hours to dry it's tacky it's not run through the cracks I think I might screw the panel back together I think the fact that the glue is only tacky is fine because it's not holding anything together it's reinforcing uh, where those uh, where those cracks are so I think I'm going to go ahead and put it back together and any slight movement that's caused will be hopefully okay. I think the first thing is to try and drop the foil into position. Pushing it over the holes. Not sure if you've got a good view of all this, but To, uh, to do, I don't want to pull the cables any more than necessary. Screws were threaded. There we go. That foot is not underneath the lip. Just doesn't seem to sit happily. foil holes, two screws in that hold the metal bracket to the lid on their own. And then this side in also.
and then four of these screws held the screen in to the brackets. Are all these screws the same? No, some are shorter than others. Putting the screen to one side. I am concerned that the hinges seem very stiff. I know they have to carry the weight of the hinge, but I'm just not sure. But they seem to be held in rivet style with some clutches. I'm just thinking if I can work in some grease and make the force slightly less. Try not to bend these. I should uh, hold them the other way and get a longer hold on that one. They don't seem to have uh, loosened up at all, which I think I would like them to. But anyway, that will do. Maybe they are really, really meant to be that stiff. Okay. The sheet's got a bit of a Morgan on it. So that one goes like that. So, made a mistake, I shouldn't have put this cover on. I think I've got that bracket completely wrong. CD drive back in purely for weight distribution. That helps a lot. And I think the next stage really is uh, test the screen again. If this doesn't work, oh my goodness. And I can feel the screen. It's a bit unsecure, it's finally tighten these. Please screen, please work. <laughs> 